Yeah, welcome back. It is the Breakfast on Plus TV. Uh, Saint Mess is going to be getting a messy for Friday. I'm getting a jolly fight, uh, you know, Friday. And, and We're that's talking about you're saying just chess. <laughs> Messi, do you play chess? No, I, I don't play chess now, but I remember playing chess with my cousin who's in the United Kingdom. I'm sure now. they beat you hands down. No, he, he taught me how to play chess and uh, it was really fun. But I still remember that, you know, chess is actually a very, uh, it's a mind game. You it know? Is. It's very strategic and that's why the name is called chess because it requires, you know, that kind of thinking strategy to play the game without any particular skill. But you have to be very smart because you have to always outsmart your, uh, you know, your opponent while playing the game. And it's the same thing as playing golf. So those games are actually uh, mind, mind, yeah, serious mind games. I'm just you now wearing your t-shirt and you just get down to golf. <laughs> <laughs> so, so but I, I played chess at the time and I wish okay. uh, I had continued no, playing chess. No, it is really a very good one. Uh, you know, when my cousin was putting me through. We used to have a great time. So I still remember the knights. I still remember, you know, the king, the queen. The you, you, you have to protect the knight at all costs. You have to protect you your knight. Protect your queen. No, you protect the knight. You you protect the king. You and protect the queen. The queen. Yes, the and the knights one. would have to do all of the <laughs> <laughs> I hope to, I'm you, getting you it. You did a crash course. No, no, no it's been a long time. I mean, okay. it's over ten years now. Oh, so wow. I I think I need to you know get back to the. It's it's one level. game I haven't I haven't actually taken I have, time I played. to. And I played it as a child. I think it was. I'm Let's thinking see. that everybody. It's our chessboard now. So we have our queen here. We have our king. Th that's we have not some so. Pawns. If you if you want me to if pawns. you want me to push, then you need you to know? bring a real chess chess board. I can't play on. People. So how do you strategize so you don't um, end bring, up? Um, bring a real chess board. Okay, checkmate. <laughs> At least that's one word they use for chess. No, just bring a real. But it's actually an interesting game. I'm thinking that it's it's good to catch people young. Okay. You know, catch them very I young agree. because I started very young then playing. But truth is, I wasn't. Consistent. You're still young. Uh, no, I'm not as young as I used to be. Um, no, you're not. Uh -huh. So, so no, that's what I'm saying. You no, know. you're not. I said very young, and, but I'm not saying as young as I used to be. And I think that if kids are exposed to this kind of game, it helps a lot. Mm. It helps in strategic thinking and planning. You know, because in life you have to take decisions. We're faced with decisions every other time. True. And uh, if you get yourself acquainted or abreast with this game, it would help it in life decisions. Yeah, it opens yeah. your mind. It helps you in taking very informed decision, critical decision during time of emergency and what to do and what not to do, the consequences. Because of for every time you make a move, there, there would always be, you know, an action. There would always be a, a result, reaction a, a reaction. reaction. So mm -hmm. for every move you make, there'll be a consequence. Yeah. And so you, you have to be very calculated. And that's what the ch chess game is about. Mm. I can just see you're you impressed. Play. I know you're very impressed. Yes, I'm <laughs> impressed by the things that you have said. But I just can't wait to, you know, uh, to learn. And uh, you're just saying it. Uh, no, no, no. They, seriously, they, I'm not. I'm not if joking. They, if they brought a, a board of chess here, no, my my biggest see. regrets now. My biggest okay. regrets now is the fact that I, I wasn't consistent in playing the game. Okay. I'm, by this time, I'm sure I probably would have been a pro. You know, like a very big pro. And we'll be representing Nigeria in different competition. I mean, if we have any kind of furor like that. All right. Uh, yesterday, we talked about uh, Adeoye Fawaza, who actually is an 18-year-old uh, who won uh, you know, that prize uh, yesterday. And uh, you know, it is interesting because uh, the whole idea is about looking for an escape route you know, from the life you know, um, in the slum. And uh, something just good to channel all your thoughts, all your energies to positive things. So at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter the challenges that you, uh, that you see around you. But uh, for the fact that you can think and position your mind to positive things, uh, maybe true chess, you know, it's actually an outlet. Yeah. So for me, I'm also thinking, it brings us back to the fact that we live in a society where we think that we probably, everyone has to earn a degree. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking that all of these games, you know, uh, the way... The way education has been for us as a country is still the same way. I mean, how many years are we now? We're still doing the same thing over and over again. And we constantly complain about the fact that we do not have, uh, we're not chunking out, <clears throat> we're not chunking out, you know, graduates who are employable. We constantly complain. Mm. But you see, <clears throat> the world that we're living now is a world where we're faced with problems. And what people are looking for is solution. And, you know, having some of these games and some of these creative games introduced in our curriculum, you know, introduced to our schools mm. would actually go a long Extra way. So yeah. let's move away from, you know, saying all of the rhymes all the time. I mean, we've been saying rhymes. I still remember that uh, in our schools, we're still saying, yeah, oh, yeah, the rhymes you say, you I'm sure your kids will say, if your kids grow up in this country, they'll still say those rhymes. Yeah, uh, yeah. And those rhymes your grandfather said them. 
and your generation before that. So I'm just saying that we, we need to begin to, as much as we constantly say, oh, we're, we're not... Um, we, we're not very impressed with the kind of people that we have. Let's not forget that the mind is from birth. You would say that it's mm. very empty. And what you're actually impressed in it is what you have. And mm -hmm. we have a population that is growing that is not productive. If you ask me, population can be a strength, it can be a disadvantage. And so, but there are so many things that we can engage this population. Not necessarily, you know, acquiring, you know, a degree. I'm, I'm thinking that, I'm not saying that it's not important to have a degree, but I'm saying that there are all the forms of learning and all the forms of, you know, um, education and educational facilities and other means that we can actually incorporate. But we're yet to get to that point because even the sporting activities, like entirely the ones that we have a handle on, mm. we have not been able to master them and become a pro in them. We're still struggling and grappling. But however, we will get there as a nascent yeah, we'll democracy. All right. Uh, now we'll be focusing our gaze uh, on COVID-19 specifically. Uh, the rise in cases that the Nigeria has recorded in the past uh, uh, six months so far, uh, from what we hear as on Wednesday, we recorded 1,424 new infections, which is about the highest uh, in six months. Uh, joining us now to discuss all of that, the, the impact and what we should be doing to ensure that we stay safe is a public health practitioner, Dr. Tuyi Mebawandu. Uh, good morning to you, Dr. Mebawandu. Many thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. Good morning. All right, Doctor, it is really alarming. Uh, are we uh, inching closer to a fourth wave right now with this uh, high rate of infections uh, that we are seeing in Nigeria? Uh, thank you. What we're seeing exactly is that we're on the fourth wave. If you look at the positivity rates, um, in mid November it was at 0 0.01. Now it's about six percent. What it means that we have seen six hundred fold increment in the new cases of COVID nineteen. And of course, Lagos is the epicenter. Um for us, we're not vaccinating enough, we're not testing enough, we're not embracing enough pharmaceutical interventions that should turn things around. And with the coming of the Omicron. Radars, which is in 37, uh, I think 77 countries now. You are correct. Uh, we've, we've seen a high rise in the numbers. And of course, we are in fourth wave, no doubt. So at, at this point uh, that we're in, and with uh, the fact that Lagos is an epicenter, what should be, you know, the policy direction? I mean, what should we be looking at? What should we be doing? Yeah, thank you. Lagos State... Um, in the last two weeks, rolled out some measures. As, as far as social gathering is concerned, uh, people should take permission, um, people should get vaccinated. Those are and a lot of things at the end of. But tell you what, Lagos is not in isolation, it's not living in isolation. There are states and general Lagos that are not of gravity those things. Even in Lagos, to observe all those protocols rolled out, it's going to be very, very difficult. What we have left for us now is to deepen the individual understanding and, and their uh, ability to embrace uh, non planting protocols. Now, if you're talking about vaccination, anywhere we can get vaccination, let us take our vaccine. In addition, let us keep the non pharmaceutical intervention going on. This is more time to actually embrace that. I'll cancel everybody that if you have to attend any social gathering, ensure that you are ready to observe those non pharmaceutical interventions and be sure that you don't meet with a lot of people. There will always be celebration beyond this time. All right, Dr. Mebawondo, let's start talk further about, um, you know, what we have not been doing, you know, right in the past few months. Because over time, we seem to have been able to have a bit of a control. Is it that we all just uh, be became so uh, 
laid back that uh, we just uh, threw a caution to the wind and uh, that's why we're having these high cases and uh, a lot of uh, people are saying that uh, we cannot really afford another lockdown so specifically now what should we be doing it's christmas lots of people are traveling and uh, most of these protocols are not being observed should we be looking in the direction of um, prosecution of um erin uh, you know defaulters well, I, I don't think we can do a lockdown again. Uh, these are the reasons. One, for what we know about the Omicron variant, that is responsible for the recent upsurge in the case of coronavirus, we're not seeing a lot of hospitalization. We're not seeing a lot of deaths with it. But that doesn't mean that we should be careless. <coughs> because if we allow the case to keep running to the society, among the people, we may then end up with uh, a lot of COVID in addition to some underlying situation, and then we can overwhelm the health system. Now, um, what we need to do is to deepen our communication, is to engage the stakeholders, and then not be tired of monitoring social gathering, target markets, target supermarkets, Target um, religious places, target um, motor parks where people try to move around. So that honestly can be one of the things to, to, to do. Okay, um, you you have in the course of this discourse, you have mentioned uh, the need for us to be vaccinated and. You would also want to agree with me that there are a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding uh, vaccination and a lot of persons have not been vaccinated. We also understand, on the other hand, that uh, the availability of the vaccines, you know, to cater for the entire population is also another concern. So um, how do we, you know, get people, what can we do uh, to get a lot of persons to take the vaccine? Now, um, the major problem we have is that we don't have sufficient vaccine. Those who are donating vaccine to us, they donate the one that goes to expiry date. Oh. So, what we need to do is to engage the community, engage the stakeholder, engage the young leader in vaccine deployment. Uh, we didn't quite get that point uh, you're making. Can you please repeat? <coughs> You know, let's, let's, let's go back a bit. During the smallpox uh, epidemic, we saw that uh, people were also hesitant in taking vaccines. What was done then to the vaccine orders was to engage a lot of stakeholders, religious leaders, traditional rulers, opinion leaders, and use them as a model to drive vaccination. And before you know it, people saw evidence and they also engage um, in the vaccination. What we are seeing now is over centralization of information about the vaccine deployment. Instead of somebody talking from Abuja or somebody talking from the state capital, I want to see a local government replica of COVID vaccine response. I want to see where the community, where the church, where the mosque, where the traditional institutions are getting involved in ensuring the vaccine goes up. Yes, we had a lot of experience in immunizing younger children, but we don't have experience in immunizing adults. So what we now need to do is to drive the vaccines to the critical stakeholder, and then we may have to, as a time, take the vaccines around people, keep preserve it and take it around, and give. If we get to the, to the, to the market, for instance, there are opinion that the influence that the motor park, there are influence that there. And the vaccines can be given. So it is key. But let us appreciate the fact that giving vaccine is not enough. You have to also embrace the non pharmaceutical intervention. You, it, you shouldn't take away your mask, your hand washing and hygiene, avoidance of crowd, and then ensure that you keep social distance with people. It's, it's key. This is the reason why it's important. The, the virus runs a large population, especially among the unvaccinated, which give the virus the chance to mutate. If we want to tell you about mutation, these are the factors that drive mutation of the virus. 
lack of vaccination, depressed immune system, comorbid factors, and then overcrowding. If you allow the transmission of the virus to increase in the population, definitely you will get mutation. All right, Dr. Mebawondo, from all that you have said, one underlying thing is that uh, we, we don't have um, sufficient um, you know, vaccine to uh, cater to the entire population. You have rightly said that we should also uh, you know, consider non-pharmaceutical intervention. But the, the, the concern for me right now is that even if we eventually get all Nigerians to comply and they want to get vaccinated, what do we have in our hands uh, when most of the vaccines that we have, uh, which were donated, are almost expired? It's a sad, it's a sad problem. It, it speaks volumes to the quality of our logistics and even the kind of vaccines we get from abroad. If, if you find the star and they are pushing me to you, and you know that you have logistic challenge, you should kindly decline and so that you can use this vaccine. Now, in Nigeria, we just have about 2% fully vaccinated population. We are going to 40%. What it means is that even if we do 150,000 vaccinations every day, we still need more than a year to get to that 40%. So we're not there. So what we need to sharpen up that is, is our logistics. So that if we get a vaccine that is that is so close to society, we can move the vaccine around the population and give it to the and give the vaccine. So as far as I am concerned, you cannot neglect those critical stakeholders. We must learn to communicate COVID and the implication at the smallest level of the community. What, how we are going to involve the traditional people, how we are going to involve the religious people, because when you see the doubters, they are mainly in those communities of religious leader, uh, you know, but we don't want the doubters to become vaccine refusers. A doubter can still, you know, be swayed to take the vaccine when they see the time, when they see evidence, when they see how we are responding. So, but if we allow them to become vaccine officers, then what, what choice do we have? We're going to work the health system that is not existent, and it will be a disaster for the country. Okay, so um, you have said that uh, vaccination is very important, and we're going to get to that point where you would also, maybe this would also convince someone who's watching, uh, you know, to go ahead and take the vaccine. Uh, the benefits, the importance, how effective and how important it is uh, uh, to get vaccinated. That's on the one hand. And then on the other hand, how do we now encourage, because you're saying less, we don't have enough vaccine. So if we're pushing the campaign, we're taking, we're trying to decentralize information, taking it to, you know, uh, traditional rulers, religious leaders, among others, how do we, what are we, what are we pushing? So we're campaigning that we have uh, more persons vaccinated. Do we have enough vaccines to cater for, you know, maybe the remaining 38% of the population that is not vaccinated or the 40%? Where do we get the vaccines from? For now, what, what we need to do exactly is to engage the African Vaccine uh, Initiative, uh, which was set up by AU um, with the African Bank, UNICEF and co. And then if you add that to the COVAX Initiative and the bilateral donors, we should be able to wrap up vaccines and campaign for vaccine equity as the case may be now. So that is at the level of government. But even the one we have now, we want them to take it so that we won't have anyone expiring. Now, it becomes important that our campaign should be on a comparison. If you have people do um, religious festivals, religious uh, convention around, say, Lagos Ibadan Expressway, and they are all crowded together, and they are moving to Lagos, moving to New York, moving to all over the other parts of the country. They will take, take the virus from the, from, from the crowd and take it all over the place. So that is the essence of this campaign. You get to the religious home, for instance, and tell them that, please ensure the following distance in, so that we can see the prevention of the non pharmaceutical intervention in your domain. Because the virus needs human beings to move around. 
It is it's just right that goes on. It's human that takes the virus from one person to another. So what we're trying to do is to break that intense transmission so that the virus will tire out. So the, the campaign at the local level should be encompassing and involve non-pharmaceutical intervention and as well as the optical vaccine. All right. We can do better. All right, Dr. Meba Wondu. Uh, uh, the Lagos State Government um, uh, commenced the um, prosecution of uh, inbound international passengers uh, who failed to submit themselves for day two and day seven PCR tests as mandated by the federal government COVID-19 protocols and, of course, um, guidelines. Uh, just how far uh, will that go? That's on the one hand. And secondly, it's the youth tide. A lot of people, you know, we see lots of um, festivals and carnivals. Should the government not be thinking the line of uh, maybe restricting, uh, maybe s movement and gatherings at this time of the year? Sorry, I've heard a lot of other voices in the background that is not making the question very clear. Okay, I, I guess you're talking about the ban. No, I, 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 that. I mentioned two things. I said that the, the Lagos State Government has begun the, 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 the prosecution of inbound international passengers who failed to submit themselves for day two and day seven uh, PCR tests as mandated by the, uh, the federal government. I was asking if that alone is enough or if it's good enough. Then secondly, I also asked that if we should not be looking in the direction of uh, maybe restricting much gatherings at this U-tight season because we find lots of them you know, available all around the, you know, the country this time of the year. Yeah, the state actually made a good law in, in terms of reducing uh, transmission during this festive period. What I was expecting is that the federal government should actually reproduce that law and other state government should reproduce it if it's going to have any impact. As far as those who come into the country that they are thinking of prosecuting, well, I, I think prosecution is not an appropriate way. We, we tend to throw um, threats around simple public uh, uh, intervention. But for me, uh, what we need me to do is to make it difficult for people not to do those tests. Uh, for people not to escape doing those tests. You have to make it difficult. I would rather look at option of fine. I would rather look at option of um, suspending their passport in a way rather than thinking that you want to prosecute and put in jail. But any measure that is cannot violate too much of their right is uh, is welcome because public health interest is paramount and key in this regard. Okay, so um, individuals have already started talking about the need to take uh, booster shots. Uh, at what point should we be talking about booster shots in Nigeria? Hello, man. We are we are just two percent vaccination. And then you want to give booster shots. So, what of the remaining 30% or 40% that need to be vaccinated? I think for me, our priority should be directed to vaccinating as many people as possible instead of taking on booster shots now. What that means is that the critical uh, doses that will be directed to those that are yet to get vaccination will now be given to those that have gotten some immunity. Let us be mindful of the fact that immunity, even after taking the two doses, cannot be zero with Omicron. If you take two doses of the vaccine, your immunity cannot be zero. But what we're saying is that we want more people to take those two doses before we start talking about booster. But I, I don't know how the policy will pan out because you want to protect 2% at all costs and leave 90%. So what will you get? So our measures, our measures should not be something we just copy because they are giving booster dose in UK, they are giving booster dose in America. UK had more than seventy percent vaccination. America close to that. Yes, they can afford to give booster dose. Then we are just two percent. In the whole of Africa, Africa is just less than ten percent of their population, more than one billion population. So why who is talking about booster here? All right, Dr. T, I know we have talked about um, vaccine uh, being um, the best way forward, you know, but 
A school of thought believes that uh, we should need to be working on our research and development uh, so that that way we should be looking at uh, manufacturing and producing uh, these shorts by ourselves. When uh, is Nigeria going to get on that particular bandwagon and of course uh, start uh, catering to its own needs? Yeah, several months ago, I pushed for us to wrap up our ability to manufacture the vaccine. What we need to do is to, first of all, build a factory, sign a manufacturing contract agreement with any of those approved vaccines, and then find a way to deploy the vaccine there. If you remember the Serum Institute of India, how did they become a tiny? When the virus broke in China, uh, Ada Fuanala went ahead and started building factories, collecting bodies. People thought he was mad. He was too bright because India was able to get sufficient vaccine to respond. And they even sell to COVAX. There's no reason why Nigeria should not be able to get a manufacturing concern running within seven months. A lot of people that are ready to help you are there. You can always mobilize the fund. But in all our cases, we, we like shortcuts. We don't want to get the long, the long run. So, what we should be doing that we will be sustainable is for us to build a factory and manufacture a vaccine and deploy safe. The Serum Institute is refusing to sell, to give vaccine to Africa and said that their hesitancy rate is too high. And that's a big problem. So now, if India refuses to give us vaccine, I will have to wait for the handouts from either COVAX or, or bilateral organizations, and we're not getting those ones. How do we move on? Let us not be mindful of the fact that we've not known or seen the end of COVID-19 and its mutation. Okay, um, uh, just as we begin to coast down this conversation, can you please run us through the benefits of being vaccinated as against the conspiracy theories that we have, you know, all around. What vaccine does for you? Raise your immunity, prevent severe infection, and limit your transmission. And that is what we're looking for. So does it also... Um Someone who's vaccinated, we also need to understand, some people are saying that uh, being vaccinated does not stop you from contracting the virus. Is that the case? Listen, being vaccinated may not stop you from contracting the virus. They prevent you from having a severe disease and hospitalization. Now, look at the common flu or influenza. You take the shot every year. What we are running away from is severe infection that will lock down the economy and paralyze the health system. All right, I will must say um, a very big thank you to you, uh, Dr. Tuyu Mebawondo. He is a public um, health um, practitioner and he joined us to look at uh, the rising uh, number of infection that we have um, across Nigeria, which is becoming very alarming. And together, uh, the General consensus here is that um, all Nigerians, as much as possible, should get um, vaccinated. We must say a very big thank you to you, uh, Dr. Tui Mebawodu. All right, uh, Mercy. So we keep on saying that we have to keep on encouraging ourselves and encouraging Nigerians to go out there and get vaccinated because uh, from what we have had, 2% uh, vaccination rate is really not uh, something to write home about. Yes, and uh, like he's mentioned, there's need for us to decentralize information and, you know, push the campaign through uh, other stakeholders in the society where you have uh, traditional rulers, you have, you know, different institutions, you also have the religious body. Uh, let's see how we can push that. But on the other hand, I mean, so the, the fact that we constantly say uh, the vaccine availability is also a major concern. How much of these vaccines do we have? Let's assume that we're able to push the entire population, not entirely, mm. or maybe have, you know, half of the population, mm. uh, you know, to be vaccinated. vaccinated and then yes. we get to that point and we don't have the vaccines. What's going to happen? So as much as we're pushing for people to get vaccinated, should we should also double our effort our on 
you know, getting the vaccine. No However, I want to get it. Whether I want to still be dependent on the Western world or we want to look inwards and manufacture, mm. what's important that we do the need for. All right, and that's the size of the show. So go out there and get vaccinated. Uh, we'll return again on Monday. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching. And I am Messi Bopo. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, that's all right to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Plus TV Africa. And on YouTube, is at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. It's all right to subscribe. Do have a wonderful Friday.